Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview on these two video cards from Asus. These are both NVIDIA GeForce GTX 680 video cards. This is the Asus DirectCU 2 version. We have the OC right here as well as the top overclocked models of these cards. Now looking at these two boxes side by side, you'll notice that these video cards are very, very, very similar. They have the same cooler, it is the same GPU. The primary difference between them is for the OC version here, you get a GPU overclock speed of 1084 MHz compared to the top version down here, which is the faster card, that will give you GPU boost up to 1201 MHz. Uh, so essentially, if you're looking at both these cards and you're thinking, well, maybe I'll just get the OC, why? Because, you know, I can get the OC, I can overclock it, get the same speeds as the top. Uh, the reason that these are significantly different is because ASUS does what is called GPU binning. So they actually take each individual GPU, uh, they test it, and they see how fast it will run. They reserve the GPUs that clock, that will overclock more efficiently uh, for their top series. So they sort of separate them all out. Top series gets the best GPUs. Uh, OC versions get one GPUs that still overclock very nicely, but maybe not quite as effectively as the top version. So that's one of the most significant differences between the two of these cards. So that said, let's take a closer look at some of the specs on the box. We're looking at the top version here. Uh, this gives a closer view of the uh, DirectCU 2 cooler that comes with the video card and the DirectCU. The CU stands for copper and Direct is for direct copper contact with the GPU. So the heat pipes contacting it directly provides uh, enhanced thermal conductivity and overall better cooling and uh, as well as the large fans that they have in here better cooling with that while st also staying quieter. Now the GPU boost speed on the top version is 1201 megahertz uh, that's GPU boost that it will um, bump the clock speed up to when the thermal environment permits. You also get digital power delivery for stable overclocking. Uh, you have a cool feature called VGA Hotwire, so you can actually directly solder. There's solder points on the video card where you can actually do hardware voltage monitoring. Uh, and you get 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory pre-installed. Next up, we'll take a look inside the box. We will see what accessories come with this video card. Uh, we have some styrofoam, of course. We have a booklet here with your drivers and GPU tweak, uh, which is the ASUS GPU overclocking, software-based overclocking uh, software. So you can install that. Uh, you can also go to the ASUS website or the NVIDIA website to download the latest drivers for this video card, which is generally a better bet than downloading the drivers off of the disk. You can get the latest versions for increased compatibility. You also get a uh, basic instruction manual here. If you've never installed a video card, that should give you some better ideas of how to do that properly. We have an extra long ribbon style SLI bridge there, so if you're going to set up two of these cards you can do so with that longer ribbon. Longer ribbon is very important for this card, and I'll come back to that in just a second. And you also get a uh, PCI Express power adapter cable here. So what this will allow you to do is take two of your six pin PCI Express power plugs and convert that to an eight pin PCI Express power plug, because uh, you do need one eight pin and one six pin to power this card. And here's a look at the GTX 680 Direct CU2. Uh, we're looking at the top version here. Again, the top version and OC versions that we showed you. Physically, just looking at the cards themselves, look exactly the same, have the same cooler. So uh, we're just going to show you the one of them here. But again, this is a sizable card. It's particularly sizable when you compare it to the uh, stock or reference version of the GTX 680. But ASUS has a few different reasons for why they use such a large cooler on this. And it's actually been very popular. One reason is that uh, in ASUS's testing and, uh, and, and when they've gone out to their community and asked about the video cards that they make, a lot of folks will say, I actually don't use more than one video card. I only use, I, I only use a single. I don't go for SLI um, because that's a lot less common. So if you're only going to be using a single video card in any particular given gaming machine, and chances are you don't need all of the space that is available in your system, um, for instance, if you're looking at your PCI Express slots. So for that reason, ASUS decided, well, let's go with a triple slot cooling design with the DirectCU, or the DirectCU 2. So there you can see, one, two, three PCI slots are taken up by this card, and that will give us a lot more space. Uh, we can actually have a much higher critical mass for the card, 
we can have a much larger cooler, we can have larger fans, the fans can be wider, they can push more air, they can be more fins, that will dissipate more heat, that will keep the card cooler overall. Uh, you do sacrifice a little bit of space, but in a lot of gaming systems out there, that space it really wouldn't be taken up by anything anyway. So uh, these cards have been very popular, the cooling is incredibly effective, and uh, that being said, let's go over some of the hardware features of the card. So the cooler, as you can see right here on the top, is the direct CU2 cooler. If I flip it over to this side, you can see the, uh, where the actual copper heat pipes terminate right there. So what you effectively have here is underneath where the GPU sits, which is right here, uh, you have the, an actual contact plate. The direct contact heat, uh, copper heat pipes will go across there, feed up into the two large radiators. So you have a single radiator right here, and then another one that's sort of positioned further away back here, um, and then the heat pipe will transfer heat to both of those. The air from the fans will push across them and uh, keep all those components nice and cool. Another element that uh, is a little bit difficult, more difficult to see, but you can see kind of right under here, you have all of the actual power delivery for the GPU situated right underneath this other cooler. So what that does is it has uh, an actual radiator on top of it as well, which you can see is sort of that black uh, area right there. So there's a radiator on top of your power delivery and that's actually going to get some additional airflow from this second fan. That's going to keep your power delivery nice and cool, so especially if you're going to go into overclocking with a card like this even further than it already comes with the, fa with the uh, factory overclock, um, keeping your power delivery area cool is very key for that. Another uh, nice aspect of this card is if you look at it from this side, which is where uh, the uh, the, the visual that most people will get if it's actually installed in a case, you'll notice this big black uh, suspension sort of retaining arm right here. So that actually feeds around this side, bolts directly into the PCI bracket right there. So what that is going to do is when you have this PCI uh, bracket secured with three screws, this retention arm here is going to give a lot more support to the card itself. So as you can see, it goes up and along this entire edge of the card. The card has pretty substantial weight. Uh, so one of the complaints that ASUS got with uh, some of their earlier cards is that when it's actually sitting in the uh, PCI slot that you do get some sag on the card, especially over time um, as, as the system's moved around or something like that. So that's going to provide some extra support for that uh, to keep the card nice and upright, keep it from dropping down, also um, reduce some of the pressure on the PCI slot up here. Speaking of the PCI slot, this card is of course PCI Express uh, Revision 3 compatible. So that gives you effectively double the bandwidth of PCI Express Revision 2. I'll just pop off the protective cover right there. Uh, don't worry, if you are going to be running this card on a PCI Express uh, 2 or 2.1 board, um, you will still have plenty of bandwidth to operate the card. Uh, benchmarks so far comparing PCI Express 2 and 3 um, really aren't showing. Uh, you, you get a, a slight bump from PCI Express 3, but it's really nothing significant. It's really just a bandwidth increase, um, and it gives you some forward compatibility for the future. Another cool thing about this um, cooling solution that I really like, cool thing about the cooling solution, anyway, uh, is that it secures actually to the card, the base plate of the card, with only four screws. So these four screws right there, if you remove those, if you actually need to clean the card out or you want to um, get closer to the nitty gritty and look at the, the PCB itself and how all that stuff's laid out, you can remove those four screws and this entire component here can actually pop off there. So um, it's even separate from this retention arm here at the top of the uh, board and that actually gives you a bit more flexibility for um, cleaning the card, like I said, or if you do want to remove the cooling solution for any reason. Another uh, item about the card that I should mention here is the power requirements. So up here at this end, you can see your PCI Express power plugs. You have a 6-pin and an 8-pin, so you will need to connect both of those. Uh, that is it up from the stock uh, power requirements for GTX 680, so also bear in mind, that ASUS is recommending at minimum a 550 watt power supply for the entire system and this card installed. Speaking of, since we're down in this area, we have another cool feature which is right here. And what this is, is that VGA hotwire function. So uh, you're going to need an ASUS ROG motherboard to really make use of this, but um, for those enthusiast overclockers out there, you can't get much better than actual hardware uh, voltage measurement. So you can actually solder uh, these connection points, connect them to the connection points on your ROG motherboard, and that will give you the ability to accurately read uh, vCore, vMemory, PLL, voltage, that sort of thing. So especially if you're doing some uh, intense overclocking, it gives you much, much finer control as well as finer uh, readouts of your different voltages using that system right there. I should also mention that uh, just like the 580 version of this card, we have a backplate here that covers the back. 
uh, that's going to protect the card, of course. Also, uh, it's made of aluminum, so it's going to provide a little bit of uh, extra heat dissipation for components that are directly uh, con contacting that on the back of the board. And um, since I mentioned the 580, I happen to have one here, but I'm actually first going to do a measurement of this card because it is a sizable card. You will want to make sure that you, that you have enough room for it in your case. I want to make sure that I don't drop it and break it. So measured from the bracket right here, we can see we are just shy of 12 inches. So um, I'll, I'll call it 12 inches total. You'll want to make sure you have at least 12 inches of space within your computer case in order to fit this card in. You probably want to give it a little bit beyond that um, just to make sure that you have enough space. But uh, it is a sizable card. And since I just said this, I'm going to do it and show you guys the GTX 580 direct CU2, put that right in front and line it up. So there you can see, even with the uh, lower power requirements of the 680, there is actually an extra three quarters of an inch or so of length on the 680 version of this card versus the 580. So the 580, which we have right here, and you can see the 580, for example, uh, has two eight pin power requirements. Um, so ASUS has actually expanded this cooler, they've made it larger, that's going to enhance the cooling ability, of course. Uh, and then if you guys wanted to look at both of these cards side by side, just give you a better look right there. So there's both of them again. Uh, another uh, aspect of this card that you might want to take into consideration here is uh, to make sure you have enough height in your case. So if you look at it from this side, that retention bracket that sticks out up at the top there does give it an extra inch or so of height. Why not? Let's give it a measure. I do have a ruler right there. So maybe not quite an inch or so of height um, from the top of the PCI Express bracket. Uh, so make sure you have enough clearance in your case to fit the card, of course. With the 580, if you compare it, it doesn't have that retention bracket. It does still have that height on the board right here. Um, but actually, the uh, cooler itself is a little bit wider here on the 680 versus the 580. So there's another side-by-side -side comparison of the two of these cards together. A few more things about this card. Uh, you do have two SLI connectors up here at the top. So uh, theoretically, you can set up two-way, three-way, or four-way SLI with the GTX 680. Uh, you would need a very special motherboard configuration or perhaps a PCI Express extension device of some kind to actually do that with these cards since they are three-slot. But you can at least do uh, two-way pretty comfortably with a lot of uh, triple-slot spaced motherboards. But given the um, spacing of this bracket right here, you'll notice that pops up a little bit. So make sure uh, if you're going to use an SLI connector for that, um, you do want to probably use this one that's included by ASUS. It's a ribbon style, so it pops up a little bit, and that way you can actually get up and over this bracket. Or I guess you could theoretically also feed it under. I don't know. Somebody else can probably confirm that for me. But uh, at the very least, you want to use a ribbon style one because the uh, actual PCB, the rigid PCB style ones, would probably conflict with that bracket. And I did want to talk about some of the uh, specs of the card, uh, for example, um, because I did talk about the boost clock uh, that's referenced on the box. So uh, I did want to also talk about the comparisons of the OC and the top version. So um, you do have a, a, a base clock um, for the GTX 680 video cards. Uh, the base clock or core clock is 1006 megahertz uh, out of the box for a standard GTX 680. That core clock for the OC version jumps up to 1019 megahertz. And then for this top version here, it jumps up to 1,137 for the core clock. Now you also again have that boost clock function that actually will uh, give you sort of an automatic overclock uh, if the thermal environment permits. Uh, the boost clock of a stock GTX 680 is 1,058 megahertz. Uh, the OC version a boost clock is up to 1,084 megahertz. And then uh, you have the top version here again, which goes up to 1,201 megahertz. And then lastly here, I'm going to talk about our video outputs. Really cool thing about the 680 is you can actually support up to four monitors from the same card. Uh, you can use three of those monitors for surround gaming, and then you can use the fourth one as sort of a companion display if you want to pull up uh, web browsing or something like that. Uh, for your video outputs here at the back, you have two dual link DVI outputs. Upper one here is digital only. The bottom one here also has analog outputs. And then you also have an HDMI 1.4a out, as well as a DisplayPort 1.2 out. And that is going to wrap it up for our unboxing and overview of these two video cards based on the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 680 GPU. Again, this is the ASUS DirectCU2 top version over here on the left, and the DirectCU2 OC version on the right. 
I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.